Hello, my name is Les Brown, and I'd like to talk to you about seven steps to control your financial destiny. I want you to take the time to listen, and I encourage you to listen to it again and again and again, because sometimes when you hear something at a different time, your life is in a different space, and you hear some things that you did not hear the first time, like going to see a movie that you've seen before. There's some things that you'll see, you say, whoa, I, I didn't see that the first time. So the same thing in expanding your consciousness and, and beginning to elevate the quality of your thinking, it's a process that you must review on a regular basis, that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. But by your working and training your mind to serve you, you will accelerate the possibility of creating wealth in your life. And so controlling your financial destiny, the first step, which is major that I talk about all the time, yes, and you know what it is, a mindset, a millionaire mindset. That takes a process. I encourage you to think about how much money you want to create. That's number one. Number two, what are you going to do with it? What, what's the purpose of it? Why is it that that's important to you? The other thing is writing it down and understanding that you must bring some value. What is it that you have? What is it that you're going to exchange in the marketplace in order to do that? I remember something I, I heard by Jim Rowan said, you don't get paid by the hour, you get paid for the value you bring to the hour. So you have to train your mind to serve you. Dr. Carter G. Woodson said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. He said, if you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. And so engaging in this process of training your mind, well, how do I do that, Les? One of the things I encourage you to do that I did for years and still do today, train yourself to read 30 to 40 pages of something positive every day to train your thinking. See, we can't control the thoughts that come in our minds, but we can control the thoughts that we dwell on. By reading 30 to 40 pages of something positive every day, you're saturating your mind and you're overpowering the negative thoughts that psychologists say that we think over 87 to 90 percent of our negative thoughts every day that goes undetected by our conscious mind. So that's the value of reading something positive every day and listening to something every day that's positive that will train your thinking. Now, the next thing, not only is the mindset as important, but information. 2007, Time Magazine said, the computer is the person of the year. And people were puzzled by that, why? Because for the first time in the history of the world, Everyday people have access to information that wealthy people have. And that really makes a difference. There's a slogan I hear with some radio stations that said that information is power. No, information that is applied in your life, that's power. And, and so you now have access to information that can help you to build and design the kind of life that you want, that you can learn anything that you so desire. You could just Google it, and there it is, available at your fingertips. The next thing is a network. The man who, who's still around today that I love is Dennis Kimbrough. He said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. In order to create wealth and control your financial destiny, it's important that you have a network of friends that you can learn from, that you can grow from, friends that can help you to begin to access parts of yourself that you don't know right now, friends who have contacts and relationships and resources that you don't have, people that you can learn from, that you can grow from. You want to develop a network of friends. My mother used to say, if you run around with nine broke people, I guarantee you, you'll become number 10. So you want friends that have more than you, people that will challenge you, that will bring some value into your life. 
The next thing, not only a network of friends that's important, but dedication. See, if you are casual about your goals and dreams, they will never happen. You have to dedicate yourself. How you spend your time tells me who you are. See, there's a difference between working from nine to five to working from five until you faint. You've got to be willing to dedicate yourself to do whatever is required. A.L. Williams had a saying that I love very much. All you can do is all you can do. And all you can do is enough. But make sure you do all you can do. And so in creating your financial destiny and controlling it, it requires dedication. The next thing is system. There's no secret to success. There's a system. And you must learn the system. A lot of people say, well, I'm not a detailed person or I never work for a major corporation. That, that's what I said. I gave myself an excuse in the past for not learning the things that I needed to learn. And I never forget what my mentor said. He said, Brownie, all of us are born the same way, dumb, naked, and speechless. You can learn. Creating wealth, controlling your financial future, it requires a system. It's something you can't wing. It's something you can't do by flying by the seat of your pants. You must learn to put together a system. Have people around you who have the skills and the knowledge and the ability to put together systems that you can execute that will allow you to control your financial future. The next thing is energy. If you're casual about your dream, you will end up a casualty. It requires energy. You've got to be fired up. I, I call it hunger. You, you know, you've got to be hungry. And, and when you are willing to put forth the energy, when you're willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have, the energy that you must invest is above and beyond that which is commonly accepted. And most people are low energy, flat energy. You've got to work on yourself. As you think about creating wealth, I want to ask you something. What's your strategy for being here? You've got to have a strategy. See, in order to create wealth, it requires a lot of energy, a lot of work on your part, dedication on your part. So that means that you want to get a physical checkup, you want to exercise, you want to set aside time that you're going to take care of you so that you will have the energy and, and be able to put in the time necessary to accumulate wealth that will allow you to control your financial destiny. And the next thing is managing your time. That is managing yourself. Time is important. And so where are you putting your time? How are you using your talents, abilities, and skills? That's important to know because whatever you're doing with your time, that tells me who you are. And so it's important to prioritize what's important to you. Because when you look at, at the end of the day, all of us have 24 hours. And so you've got to ask yourself, what's important? What is it that I need to do? One of the things that I encourage you to do is get a list of something that you know that if you do these things, and I'll say, let's say get a list of seven things that you know that these are seven action steps that will move you in the direction of your dream. Now, when you get ready to go to sleep at night, think about what is it you want to get out of the day that's coming up. The next day, most people are just trying to get through the day. You want to get something out of the day. And so you list seven things that's important to you that would move you closer to your dream. You write those things down the night before, you read those things before going to sleep, and when you get up the next morning, you read those action steps, and you start working immediately on those action steps, and don't do anything else until you have checked them all off to make sure that you've got that done. If you make a habit of doing that, of taking the seven most important action steps that will move you closer to your dream of the seven steps of creating financial independence. If you do that, you'd be surprised at how fast you'll be able to reach your goal. You'll be surprised at how fast you'll be able to accumulate wealth and control your financial future. You have something special. You have greatness within you. That's my story.
and I'm sticking to it. I want you to think about your goals and dreams. What is it you, you want to do with your life? Particularly now, because what we know is the life is fragile. I was planning not to come out till 2027. And then somebody whispered in my ear called life. Who said you're going to be here in 2027? I know you want to be. Uh, did you remember Michael Jackson? They spent millions of dollars saying this is it. That was it. But it was not the it they had in mind. Mm -hmm. Only put off for tomorrow the things that you don't mind dying in you today. And I said, I got to come out. I, you know, I've been in so long. I've been talking to squirrels. They even have a squirrel friend who's taught me squirreling. I was the king of my best Which said, right then in squirrely, I'm so glad to be here and talk to you about focusing. Because in order to make it now, with all the distractions that's going on, that you have to focus. You have to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. A lot of people are focused on entertainment. A lot of people have checked out. A lot of people are snapping, having meltdowns in traffic, road rage, in grocery stores, arguing about toilet paper, or family members arguing in, in the bedroom about their relationship, waking up in the morning and said, you know what? I don't want to do life with you anymore. Mm -mm. I feel lonely whenever you are around. I'm out of here. And so as we look at ourselves, look at our goals and dreams, the, the, one of the most important things we have to do is focus on what gives you a sense of peace. I, I, I've been ending relationships that don't bring value to me and that are not peaceful. See, I've come to know that you don't have to help life bring drama. Life will traumatize you by itself. You don't have to augment and compliment the process. But there are people who have a propensity for drama. And any little thing can take them and tilt the needle in that direction. No, this is the time you want to focus on peace. If you don't have a peaceful state of mind, if you don't pour into yourself a person that don't have a, that don't have a sense of peace, they're subject to snap at any time. That's why we're seeing unexplained violence. We, we see people that's making dumb, stupid decisions that cause them to, to throw their lives away because of the decisions they make. When anger goes up, ignorance increases and intelligent thinking goes down. And so this is a time that you want to focus on peace and then you want to focus on this question. Am I on course? Is this the best way for me to live my life right now? And you want to focus on your relationships and ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? Is it an asset or a liability? Is it bringing out the best of me? Is it holding me accountable? Is it creating the next greatest version of myself? Do I feel good? When this person is around me, I, I have a friend that I, I was telling her, I said, tell me how you feel when your husband comes near you. And, and she called me, she said, uh, she said I, I, I feel threatening, uncomfortable. I said, you need to get out of there. I said, that's unhealthy. She'd been having a cervical cancer surgery for several years. After she left him, she didn't have any more. There are people who can make you sick. You know, you say, you make me sick? That's real. There's a book I read called Who's the Matter with Me? So you want to focus on the relationships. You want to focus on the environment because environment, it, it can determine how you feel about yourself and how you see the world. So I'm saying to you at this point in time, focus on that which is positive that can give you a sense of optimism. Focus on the relationships that can empower you, that can hold you accountable. Focus on your strength so that in the, in the in events that are going on right now, so you can turn those adversities into your creativity and your advantage. You, you have greatness in you. And you have to be hungry for greatness. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to work hard. You have to make a conscious, deliberate determined effort. You have the power 
authority, and dominion on living life on your terms. Understand. Focus is important. Yes. What I love about what you said was when you were talking about the distractions. Mm -hmm. Back when you were a kid, how many channels were there on TV? Three. <laughs> you had three distractions. Yes. How many YouTube videos have you watched today? None. You watch 30 YouTube videos every morning. Oh, I thought the many channels. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah you don't yeah, watch yeah. TV. No, no, you no, don't no, have no, a no. television. Yeah, yeah. We no, don't watch the, TV in this no, house. No, You know why? Because, because what we're, you look at, what you tune into, what you listen to, you turn, turn into. All right? Yeah, yeah. What no, you, what you listen to, what you watch, you, you turn, turn into. into. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. And what has happened as time has grown, as new technologies emerge, guess what? It becomes tougher and tougher to have focus. Yes. So that is right. You need to focus on your dream. That's why we're inviting you to New York on August 14th, if you're going to be there. You need to focus on your family. That's why this is a family affair. If you want to be a part of the first family of motivation in our first event since the pandemic. And here's something that's important. You need to focus more on your destiny than you are to your distraction. That's real. You know what happens when you focus? What? You tune out the world around you mm -hmm. and you start to identify something. You get laser focused, as Miss Lisa Nichols would say, and then after focus comes faith. Oh, yes. Yes. Faith, faith. Faith stands for what, Dad? Finding, Finding answers, answers in the heart. Yes. yes. What does it mean? Why are you going to focus? Because it's hard to make it today if you don't know how to take control of your own mind. And that's what Les Brown's going to help you to do at the Hungry for Greatness event. How to reclaim your power so that you can tap into the power of faith. How do you become the number one motivator in the world? How do you have millions of fans, not because of how you shoot a ball or how you dribble or, or, or how fast you drive or any type of athlete, but because your words help them to believe in themselves and change lives. And change lives. You know what, Dad? Mm -hmm. Right now, coming out of a pandemic when the suicide rate has risen over 14%, when... In the military, over 50%. In the military, over 50%. When you can turn on almost any channel and see death and disruption and war and misogyny, it's very rare that you can be a part of an event that boosts your faith. Talk to people about why they need to have faith in themselves. If you want to achieve your goals, you have to see the value of making a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to feed your faith, as Creflo Dollar would say, and allow your doubts to starve to death. When you look at where we are right now, that most people have lost themselves. This is a time to keep your commitment to your faith in your faith. Mm, hold on, Let's say that one more time. Dad. Keep your commitment to your faith in, in your, your faith. faith. Look at this question right yeah. here. How can I risk establishing my own business without support from others? Guess what it's going to take? Faith. <laughs> yeah, you do what you can do, and God will do what, what you, you can, can do. do. I started now. with nothing. Hello? No money, no four color brochure. Don't have any MBA. Labeled educable, mentally retarded. Born in an abandoned building on a floor. Foster kid. Adopted. I, I, I have this dream of buying my mother a home. I never did that before. There's a reason we're taught to walk by faith and not by sight. We are re there's a reason we're taught to call forth those things that be not as though they were. Those are just words printed on a page. Then we have to demonstrate that. We got to make our prayers equal to our performance. Whoa. And a lot of people are throwing in the towel. A lot of people 
of giving up. And, and as we look at ourselves, that, that, that faith, it drives us. Faith not tested can't be trusted. It doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen to you. You can hide. You can speak in tongues. And life will still kick your butt. <laughs> the messenger of misery will still come to your house and say, get me some coffee <laughs> and a newspaper. Because I'm going to be here for a minute watching Netflix. I'm going to make your life a living hell. <laughs> it's part of the process, but I'll be good. I'll be saved by time. Yeah. Now come over here so I can get against this map here. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's so true. And you know what's important sometimes, Dad? What? We have to be real. Everyone doesn't have faith. Yeah. And sometimes you can go through things that force you to lose your faith. But I know for me, when I lost my faith in myself, my dad's faith in me kicked in. You know why faith is powerful? Why? Faith isn't just for you. No. It's for others. What well, without any question. I, and, and you know what we're doing now? One of my children just said, I want to work with you. I've seen this for several years and he was judging the possibilities of what I can do based upon my past failures, mm. based upon the fact that I was diagnosed with fourth stage cancer and I'm glad some things happen to you some things happen for you I said you don't know me like that Come on now, you know I'm coming. You're Listen, coming. come here, so, come here. I have you a... don't know me like that. Don't write me off because I'm 77. Don't write me off because I've had some failures and disappoint disappointments and, 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 and setbacks in the past. Don't write me off because somebody with a stethoscope around their neck talking about how long I got to be here. I like with one of our, our members in our Hunger to Speak group said, you be the doctor, I'll let God be the timekeeper. Woo! <laughs> it's a scripture that when I first heard it and read, read it, I just said, oh boy, that's, that's cold-blooded. I just couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. It didn't have any compassion in it. He that hath shall get and he that hath not, even that that he has, shall be taken away. Oh my God, you think it. He that hath, the person who hath, they will get, and the person who don't have, even that, that little bit they have, shall be taken away? Hmm. That doesn't seem right. But there's a question. He that hath what? Vision. People without vision perish. Ambition. Drive. A willingness to work. Stubbornness. Perseverance. Faith that roars so loudly doesn't give you an opportunity to hear the doubts that you have within yourself. You have those qualities, you will get. You have those qualities, you restore everything you lost and more. You have those qualities, angels will make room for you. Come, 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 come. Let, let's intervene here because he won't quit. She won't stop. We've done everything and they won't stop. Come, we got to intervene now. And then let's go find a wimp, somebody who's stopped. Somebody who's allowing themselves to be consumed by fear. They're weak. Yeah, because God has not given them a spirit of fear, but of power. They ain't got no power. They're consumed in fear. They can't even think straight. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of a sound mind. This place where you are, where I am, this place 
We've been picked out to be picked on. This place, we, we are more than conquerors. This place is a testimony, no test, no testimony. This place, no guts, no glory. This place, faith not tested, can't be trusted. This faith will find a way. Yeah, we need to know that. We need to saturate ourselves with words that will empower us right now. Our children are watching. Our children are not okay. There's an article, Google it. Our kids are not okay. The suicide rate among children, teenagers and younger, sorry, because they're watching us. See, how we live our lives, Jim Rohn said this, how we live our lives, it can be a warning or an example. Did you hear me? How we live our lives, our children are watching. It will be a warning or an example. A warning of what not to do or an example of what to do when tragedy and interruptions and crises show up. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day that having done all to stand. This is our time to stand. This is our time to be actively engaged in this thing called life. Hmm, our children are watching us. They're generations yet unborn that are depending on us. They're people who gave their lives, like a John Lewis said, create some good trouble. It's our time. It's our time. You have something special. God is on your side. If God is for you, who can be against you? You got a winning team. <laughs> I'm looking for, and I'm on a, a mission for people who can hear me. If at some point in time when you're a little kid or a grown person, you're going through some stuff and you heard my voice, and the reason you heard it, because what's in me is also in you. And the reason you responded and came out of the darkness into the light, because there's a calling on you to do the same thing. You and I are cut from the same cloth. You're branches of the same tree. If my message and my method and my approach resonates with you, I'm not talking about my hairstyle. <laughs> my kid didn't play hairstyle and I'm kid, no. I'm talking about my message. And you have a message in you. You have a story in you. You, you like to help people, the millions of people who need to hear a multitude of voices. I want you to put voice in the comment section. Put voice in the comment section and allow us to introduce you to the power voice system that teaches you how to tell your story, that teach you how to create an experience with your voice and your story, to transform people individually and collectively. Allow me to mentor, to coach you, to bring out the greatness in yourself and to bring out the greatness in others if that's your calling i love to tell you and i will always remind you a job is what you get paid for a calling a calling is what you're made for if it's your calling put voice in the comment section if you can hear me in your heart i'm not challenging your ability to, to hear with your ears because you wouldn't still be here with me. I don't have any 
Prince translating my words. So if you're still here, the only reason you're listening, because what's is in me, it's in you. You and I are cut from the same cloth. We are branches of the same tree. It's time to make a decision. Put voice in the comment section. We don't know how much time we have left, do we? Michael Jackson said, this is it. And it was. <laughs> okay. Put voice in the comment section. Live each day as it were your last. Because what we learned from the coronavirus, one day, it will be. Toby Gadsden. We graduated together at Booger T. Washington High School in Miami, 1963. Wow. Classmate had COVID-19 and he kicked COVID's butt. Toby, I'm so happy for you, brother. So happy. Prayed hard for you. But you've always been a fighter since we were in high school. Well, I tell you, you and Larry Littles, who played for the Miami Talkers, boy, we went to school. We would miss school because we were characters. We were always clowning. We always wanted to know, what will we do next? <laughs> we came to see each other for cafeteria and physical education. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, boy, that's Back in the day. I hear young people today, these millennials, talk about back in the day. They don't know anything about back in the day. I got t-shirts older than them. <laughs> but at 75, at 75, I, I, my goal is to finish strong. At 75, my goal is to to train the best speakers on the planet. My at 75, my my goal is to find people who are hungry to make an impact with their lives, who are hungry to to learn how to use and access their power voice, who are hungry to live a life that will outlive them. Yeah, you forget your years, your years will forget you. Hmm. And I want to leave this with you. As you look at your goals, be stubborn about your goals. Be stubborn. Don't give up on your goals. You will fail your way to success. Don't give up on your goal. Make no your vitamin, as Suzanne de Pass would say. Don't give up on your goal. Be stubborn about your goals. Be flexible and versatile. Ask for help. A lot of people won't do that because of ego edging God out because a lot of people, as a result of pride, pride, pride cometh before fall. Ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. You don't have to figure it out. Get started. Do what you can with what you have. God will do what you can. I, what you think about your life right now, I, I was reflecting on when I decided to become a professional speaker. I looked at my life and I just said, you know what? I want to do more. I want more. I want more for myself, my family, my mother, and I want to be in charge of my own destiny. And what I was doing at that time was not providing that. And I, it got to a point, I don't know whether or not you've ever been there, that just doing something eight hours a day, five days a week, just to pay the bills, to keep a roof over my head, and for transportation and food on the table, it just didn't get it. <laughs> If you can understand how I felt, I just didn't get it. I didn't find that fulfilling. One, I was doing something that wasn't me. And I was doing something to survive. What it takes to live, 
versus what it takes to survive are two different things. And so here's what I realized, that if you're not willing to take a chance on you, if you're not willing to learn something and reach beyond your comfort zone so that you can explore some other possibilities for yourself, you'll never discover the greatness that you have within yourself to do more, to have more, and to experience more. So I, I, wanted, I wanted to see what else was out there for me other than what I was doing at the time. I was a salesperson at Sears, and they said, if you're the top salesperson, uh, that, that you will get a promotion to be the sales manager. Well, I was the sales, top salesperson for six months in a row, and they told me they couldn't promote me. I said, no, don't say you couldn't. Just say, you won't promote me. Well, they say, well, the reason is it will lower morale. Lower morale? Yes. Uh, everybody in that area there would be very upset. Obviously, the only raisin in a glass of milk, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I said, what? I said, come on, you got to be kidding me. No. We would love to give you the promotion. I said, excuse me, don't use the word give. I've earned this. Six months in a row, I've earned this. You said, if you're the top performer, you will be selected for manager. Now you're changing the rules. Now I had a choice. They said I would lower morale. So I took a chance on me. I wonder what happened to the morale when the top performer left. <laughs> and they had the unmitigated gall to ask me to train the people that they were going to put over me. I said, hello, do I look like Mr. Buckethead? No, be a team player, no. <laughs> you know, some people got nerve, you know me? They got nerve up in here, up in here. I said, I got to do something that puts me in charge. If you want to be in charge of life, but but I'm working from home now. This is what I do. When I'm not talking to you, you know what I'm doing? I'm speaking to corporations. I'm speaking to organizations. I'm speaking to different groups of people who want to be motivated and inspired. And helping them to create a sense of engagement and unification, even though they're separate geographically. And I'm doing that from the comfort of my home. I teach people how to use this computer to bring their personality through, their passion and their energy through, to create a, a significant emotional event. See, the reason I have the advantage of doing this than the average person, because I was in radio for many years. I couldn't see the people that I was talking to. And you do it after a certain period of time, you develop some skills intuitively that you know when you're connecting with people. And so that has given me a competitive edge, being in radio for so many years. That's why I'm teaching people now how to, to do virtual seminars and workshops now, and, and, and be successful at it. I'm successful at this and, and one of the top impactful speakers doing this because of my background. Do something beyond your comfort zone. Learn something new so you can see what's in you. You got some more stuff back there, but you'll never find out what it is if you don't test yourself. And I was going seeing these people speaking everywhere, and I said, I'm going to put myself to the test. I look at them, they put their pants on one leg at a time, just like I do. And so part of the whole process, because I was listening to motivational messages on a regular basis, and I was getting fired up. Now, write this down. The people that are going to make it now, the people that are going to take advantage of this breakthrough. Listen, we work hard for where we are right now. Don't, don't sleep this period now. Good times, they have an expiration date. 
Bad times, they have an expiration date. We just came through something. With the election of two senators, the, the, the scale has tilted. The, the force of evil has been subdued. Listen what I said. Not destroyed, but subdued. It will raise its ugly head again. So you want to maximize this time. You want to milk this moment. You want to make your move right now. And, and one of the things that I do and I encourage my kids to do, when I make some money, I operate like I don't have a dime. Like I don't have a dime. I, I start working harder. And this is what you have to do. The people that are going to be successful are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. What is it that most people won't do? Here's what they won't do. Learn something new. They're comfortable with what they're doing now. Well, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So, learn something new. If you're not willing to learn anything new, no one can help you. But if you're willing to learn something new, like I decided to do this, no one can stop you. I'm my own boss. I call my own shots. And I'm not saying this to you to impress you, but to impress upon you that you got it like that too. And that's why I'll train you how to do that, how to use your voice, how to use your gift of gab, how to use your knowledge and your skills. People with knowledge and skills are working for corporations. You need to learn how to work for yourself from home virtually and control your own destiny. Be your own boss. That's what time it is. Here's something else. I, I discourage you. Don't do this if you're not hungry. Did you hear what I just said? Now, I just told you you ought to do this, right? And then right after that, come on, Les, what are you saying now? You're telling me don't do it if, yes. If you're not hungry, if you're going to make it today, you got to be hungry. The 47 million people are going to lose their jobs from artificial intelligence. Millions of people have lost their jobs because of coronavirus. You think you're the only one out here? No. It's a different market right now. It's different. There are people that are desperate going through foreclosures and evictions lost their jobs, lost their businesses. So the people that are going to come out on top, the people that will snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, they're hungry. When I came out here, I was hungry. I got five sons and five daughters and a mother that I wanted to take care of and buy a home for. You got to be hungry. People that are hungry, are relentless you, you get you got to get your hustle on people that are hungry are the first ones there and the last ones to leave most people not hungry most people are conditioned to to do just enough to keep from getting fired working in an environment where they've been paid just enough to keep from quitting it takes some time to step out of that mental conditioning People that are hungry, when I worked for WBKO, I was program director, I was news director, I was manager of station operation, I, 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 I did commercials, I, I did editorials, I, I did a talk show, The Voice of the People, whole lot of stuff that they didn't pay me for. Why, Les? Because I wanted to learn, I wanted to make myself indispensable, that's why, that's why I did it. I, I wanted to make myself more valuable and, and increase my value for the operation. You have to have that kind of attitude about life that are you increasing your value every day? If you were on the stock market, would you invest in you? Most people have to say no. Why? They're not reading anything. They're not learning anything new. They're operating within their comfort zone and they're praying every day that they don't lose a job that they hate. That's what you call mixed emotions. See somebody you hate drive off a cliff in your car. You're glad they're gone. 
but not in your car. <laughs> oh, behave. Hello. Whatever. <laughs> no. No. It's a different place now. You got to be hungry. You have to get your stuff together. You average is over. The being average, doing just enough to get by, no. Mm -mm. And and when I talk to people, I can ask a certain question. I can tell the hungry ones and the ones who are slackers, and they're everywhere. The pigeons. See today, employers are looking for eagles. You go outside right now and see some pigeons, but it's going to take a minute to see some eagles because they fly high this is what time it is and and when you look at yourself look at your goals look at your dreams it's it, this th this time demands that you get outside of your comfort zone this time requires that you invest in you that's what i was willing to do the people that will be successful are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have people who are not successful have large television screens and 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 people who are successful have large libraries hello mm. oh people who are hungry are willing to discipline themselves they they're willing to dedicate themselves to learn something different see it Anything can be mastered if you're willing to put in the time and put in the effort and 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 focus yourself on learning how to do that to make yourself stand out in the attention economy. This is the attention economy. You got to make yourself stand out. Yes, yes. You 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 just can't mosey through this time and think you're going to get some customers. So you have to think in terms of market takeaway. What value are you bringing that's superior to everybody else? You've got to operate out of the thinking of Henry David Thoreau. Do not go where the path may lead. Go where there's no path and leave a trail. You've got to set a new standard. 